Yesterday, Mayor Craig Greenberg delivered his first State of the City address after being in office for a full year. After delivering it, he learned of the death of his mother. The mayor had previously scheduled to come into the Wave studio tonight to do an interview, and he has made good on that commitment despite the loss of his mother yesterday. So before we get into the issues, uh, all of us here at Wave extend our condolences and I was kind of wondering what kind of an impact does your mother have on you and more specifically on your role now as mayor? Yeah, well, thank you very much, John. I really appreciate your um, condolences and the support I've received from across this community to Rachel, myself, my dad, sister, our entire family uh, is overwhelming. You know, one of the things my mom taught me early on was in our faith, there's a concept of repair the world, a simple but powerful notion that every day in ways large and small, we should all try to make the world a better place. And really that fueled me as I thought about running for mayor and now serving as mayor. And so I'm going to continue to remember uh, where I first learned about the concept of repairing the world from my mom every day and hope that her legacy continues to inspire me as I move forward with this public service chapter of my life. Okay, speaking of repairing the world, yes. uh, you've been on this trek. Um, when it comes to crime, so much of it is drug related. J just this week we ran a story on Dosker Manor over here and, and yeah. their trouble getting security because people won't take the jobs because drug dealers have literally, they say, uh, come in and taken over unwilling tenants' rooms. I've been doing stories now on drug houses that police say LMPD's not doing anything about terrorizing these communities for years. The one I'm working on right now, um, this guy's had a years long battle uh, with trying to get somebody to do something about it. And he got an email back. This is right before you took over. Okay. He got an email back from a councilman who said the mayor actually has all authority in this situation and the mayor can make the police enforce drug laws or not. Yeah. What has been your message to the police directly, your mandate when it comes to things like drug house enforcement, things like that? Well, it, it has been very clear that violent crime, drug trafficking, like you're talking about, and things of that nature, that is simply unacceptable. And we can and we must do more. You mentioned Dosker Manor. We just brought in a new executive director of the Louisville Metro Housing Authority, and what she said and when she met with me seven days into her new job is, the problems are bad, but we are going to fix this, and that is why she is brought in. I'm really excited about the progress we'll make there. With the police, we are working right now. We need about 200 more police officers, but even while we're working to recruit those officers, we're doing more. We've, the chief has a new non-fatal shooting squad that we're doing. Just last week, we announced a new focused effort with our prosecutors to ensure that we can address individuals that are repeat firearm offenders. When you're talking about drug houses, the police, yes, we can and we must do more. We also need our codes and regulations to enforce the violations in those drug houses to ensure we crack down on those and get tenants or owners of those homes that are better. We just brought in a new director of our codes and regulations department, Richard Price, who is really gonna be focused on this effort. So it is a comprehensive effort. It's unacceptable. We're continuing to work hard and we won't stop. And finally, we need support from our judicial branch as well. We are going to arrest the individuals that are responsible. We need them to be held accountable. Let's talk about uh, homelessness here. Um, every time the last several months that we just step over half a block away over to Broadway mm -hmm. and say we wanna shoot a promo, just three or four lines, we can hardly do it because of the endless line of homeless or people with serious mental issues, mental health issues coming up and, and messing with us. And, and it, it is truly unbelievable, just what we experience. But forget about what we experience. Even, I mean, you see how hard of a time businesses are having to make a go of it down here. Yeah. Uh, we just did a story on this guy over here at First of Broadway, the subway owner, uh, four break-ins in, in two weeks. What more can be done about downtown and specifically about the homeless slash sea of people out there yeah. right now with serious mental health problems? So several things. I hope folks have noticed an improvement because we've had a very different approach in our administration to ensuring that everyone has access to safe and healthy streets. If you're homeless, living on the streets is not safe or healthy. And if you're not homeless, you have a right to enjoy safe and healthy sidewalks, parks, and other public spaces. So we're doing several things. One is we're building a new community care campus that's gonna provide more services and shelter for individuals that are in need. Uh, we're getting ready to allocate a significant amount of opioid settlement money to address the addiction crisis that so often leads to people being homelessness, uh, to being homeless. We're also um, addressing the mental health crisis that exists in 
in our community that is leading to individuals being homelessness. And ultimately, we need to build more affordable housing. And that's what I advocated for yesterday in the state of my, our city address, that we need about 15,000 plus new units that we're on track to build over the next three years. That housing first with supportive services is the solution, but everyone should have the right to safe and healthy streets. And we're working on ensuring that downtown is safe, clean, that people are not, um, a, that people are space is not violated, and we will hold those individuals accountable. Regardless of your housing status, if you are committing crimes, you should be held accountable. Um, when you yesterday in your State of the City address, or uh, I've heard this frequently from lawmakers over in Frankfurt when they're debating the three strikes law, when you say crime is down, it makes some people mad because when we're talking fractionally, like homicides down from 157 to 150 or carjackings down fractionally, it makes people mad because, and I heard Terry Miners on the radio go off on a rant after a soundbite from Frankfurt on this issue, uh, because yes, it may be down a couple, but versus 10 years ago yeah. in our lives, there's been a dramatic change in our lives. So what, what are your thoughts on exactly what you can do and how much can a mayor actually do about some of this stuff that oftentimes comes back to parenting or other issues. It does, but we can't use that as an excuse. And while uh, I'm only highlighting that because we are trending in the right direction, which is positive progress, we have to start somewhere. But I'm also very clear, we have far more work to do because one homicide, one shooting, one carjacking is one too many. And so we're gonna continue to working with LMPD on responding to violent crime, holding people accountable, preventing it. We can inf increase the number of officers that we have through good recruiting efforts and ensuring that LMPD has best-in-class tools and resources so that we support them in doing their job. But we're also investing in other programming to address the long-term. Maybe we're not going to get everyone and help everyone right now, but there are young people right now that we need to ensure their path in life is one where they pursue positive hopes and opportunities and don't start hanging out with the wrong people. So whether it's investing in community centers, parks, libraries, and all of that associated programming, that's what we're going to continue to do. We also have a program called Group Violence Intervention, where right now LMPD and other members of our administration identify those young people in our community that are most at risk of either being the trigger puller themselves or being a victim of a crime, of a shooting. And we address, we work with them directly and try to help them on a new path. Otherwise, we are very clear about what the legal consequences are if they choose to go down the wrong path. We need to do all of these things. We need to address the root causes of poverty. We need to make universal pre-K a reality. Those are long-term solutions, but we have to stop the bleeding and death that's happening on our streets right now. All right, enough of the, the negative. Uh, one last quick question. What has been uh, the best moment of unexpected satisfaction you've had a year into this that you didn't see coming? Oh, well, the, the, op the people that I work with every day, there are so many people in Louisville who love Louisville and work as part of the Metro government team. Right. We have nearly 6,000 people, everyone from public works to public health and everywhere in between. And people are doing this job not because they're looking to get rich, but because they love Louisville. They want to give back. And so that's my message to others is join us. Be a part of the team. Uh, th there are a lot of challenges in this job. In fact, it's the most challenging thing I've ever done in my life. But more it's challenging also, than wrestling? Yes, more challenging than wrestling. Okay. However, it's also the most rewarding because as mayor, as a city government, we can truly make a difference. So yes, I do believe to your question earlier on violent crime, we can make a difference. We have to make a difference. And so that's why I'm so excited a year into the job about what's ahead for our city. Well, we at WAVE, thank you for coming in here. It says a lot about your character and your commitment coming in the day after passing your mother's. Thank you for coming in and answering these questions. We look forward to talking to you again down the road. Thanks, John, and uh, I look forward to all the great events we have coming for the rest of the uh, year. Yeah, it's going to be a good spring. Thank you. Take care. The Speaking of that, the Kentucky Derby Festival poster has been revealed. You're going to hear from the artist behind the drawing and what the selection means to him as Wave News continues.